Hello, I'm Jamila Musaiva, an international social etiquette consultant and author of etiquette books. If you're a new viewer, welcome to my channel. Here I talk about etiquette, topics related to self-development, soft skills, lifestyle, books that I read. So if you're interested in all of that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. If you are an old viewer, welcome back to my channel. I am delighted to see you here. So those of you that have been following me on Instagram probably know that I've been teaching etiquette in business in school and as such I've been preparing students for their A-level exam. As well, I am a co-founder and entrepreneur of the very first Azerbaijani baby gym and over the 3-4 years I've gained a vast amount of personal experience as well as theoretical knowledge about how to become more financially successful and um, I'm using the word financially successful and I'm not saying wealthy or rich because I believe that for every person whatever success means in terms of finance is very different. What I want for everyone who's viewing this video is to be able to live a comfortable life that allows them uh, to enjoy life, to make the best out of it, uh, whatever that range of finance means to them. So in this video, we're gonna look at three important lessons that you need to know in order to be financially successful. First things first, before I delve into this video, I just want to say that I'm a huge advocate of financial literacy. I think it's very important to educate your children in school or outside of it if there aren't any uh, business classes in the school about finance, how money works, because at the end of the day, when we graduate from school, from high school, from university, that's the most important thing that we need to know and how to deal with the money that we make. So what I mean by financial literacy is educate yourself on earnings. What are earnings? Earning is the money that we make. Understand how to earn money, where can I generate earnings, Where, from which different channels I can do that. Then understand budgeting. Budgeting means knowing how much you spend uh, for each month, for necessary things, for your wishes, whimsical desires, necessities, all kinds of things, how much you allocate for each uh, sector, so to speak. Um, you need to understand spending, how much and where to spend, how to spend smartly. You need to know about taxation, what is being taxed, how much is being taxed. It's very different from country to country. Understand how borrowing works, where you can borrow money, how much you can borrow, what is the best way to borrow money. Um, these are the most important things that you need to know when you are dealing with money. Another important thing you need to understand is investing that can go along with the spending, whereas investing is putting money down, so spending it, but then um, earning in the long term from it, maybe in the short term, depending on where you invest your money in. All of these are important things to educate yourself. And the most important lesson that you need to know is that money is just a medium and finance is the channel through which we learn to generate it. So to wrap it up, having understood or being able to identify what are the earnings, what is taxation, what is budgeting, what is investment, what is borrowing, what is spending, having the general knowledge on how things work, you can now get rid of your negative thoughts about the money. That's the second important thing to do. So what are the general negative thoughts about money? It's thinking that if you were born poor, you will always live poor. That's the mentality fixed. I will be doing whatever my parents have been doing. I'll never be able to get out of this situation. Another common negative thought is blaming the rich for being rich or talking down to them or negatively about people that were, be, that were able to become financially successful. Um, always finding reasons for them to be able to do that and finding excuses for yourself for not being able to do that. In fact, a lot of the modern financial literature books are focused on this particular idea that if you have bad negative thoughts about money or you think that money is evil or you have you know, some ideas entrenched into your mind by your parents, by your society, um, by your culture, that will very much affect how much uh, you're able to generate uh, money, how, how financially successful you will be. So to name just a few, Robin Sharma in 5am Club book mentions about that. Morgan Husserl in his book Psychology of Money talks exactly about this idea. Robert Kiyosaki in the book Rich Dad Poor Dad also talks about it. I'll also link the names of the books down in the description box so you can check them out. It is true that our thoughts shape our reality and our thoughts about money are no exception. 
If we associate money with something evil, bad, that only bad, evil people are able to generate, that main idea by itself will keep money away from us. Because think about it, if you think about something that's bad, you subconsciously try to stay away from it. So though you want to generate money, but because you think of it in a very negative terms, that money will never come your way. Instead of thinking that people that generated money that were able to become financially successful are intrinsically evil, they are corrupt, they're doing something wrong, think about the ways that you can get inspired by looking at their example. How and what, by what ways were they able to accumulate that uh, or generate that money? What made them financially successful? Learn to get inspired instead of criticizing and blaming people for being financially successful. And one of my favorite books, I'll probably do a video on this as well, The Power of Subconscious Mind. Dr. Joseph Murphy is stating this quote that I would like to read out to you verbatim. And he says, the way of life is through abundance. Interesting. The way of nature is through abundance. There is nothing wrong or bad about wanting to be rich. It's life's natural way of being. If you accept this mentality, your relationship towards money will also change. Do not limit yourself by thinking that only those born rich are rich. By doing so, you put yourself into a box and limit your wish to live a more prosperous life. To support his points of not putting yourself into this closed mindset, into closed box that if I were born poor, I'll always live poor. That's a box that you're creating in your mind mentally. I want to give you this example that, you know, not all uh, children of rich people end up being rich or their children get, uh, get to maintain the wealth that they have accumulated. Oftentimes it happens that a wealthy family turns bankrupt once their uh, kids were not able to generate that wealth, not being able to keep it up. And oftentimes there are so many stories of people that started from nothing, that didn't come from a very financially successful background, but were able to build empires. It is all in our minds and also how much we work and how we work. So if you have in your vocabulary words like, I cannot afford this, I don't have money for this, think of rephrasing that. And Dr. Joseph Murphy in that book, The Power of Subconscious Mind says, instead of saying, I can't afford this, say, how can I do what can I do in order to afford this? How can I generate more income? How can I allow myself to get this? And it's interesting because it shifts your mentality from seeing whatever you are in as a problem to looking for a solution of how to get to the thing that you want to attain. And the third important step is to incorporate good financial habits. That is a larger umbrella idea, but below that idea, there are a lot of important financial habits that you need to acquire. Number one, when we were talking about earnings is to actually earn money. That's the obvious one. But how do we earn money? We earn money when we are able to do what we are naturally inclined to do really well. So we have good skill set for that matching with our intrinsic um, passion or our intrinsic interest in what we're doing. So taking from my personal example, it took me a lot of time to finally figure out what is that that I wanted to concentrate on. I knew that I really liked languages, I loved etiquette and all different things about cultures, traditions, so be, be understanding the idea of international, international relations. I was also very much interested in public speaking. So when all the three skill sets came about together, it brought me to a career of etiquette consultant. I love talking to people, I love giving lectures. That is what I'm good at, but that's what I'm passionate about. So when the two things come together, they allow you to do whatever you're doing at the very best that you can. And whenever you're doing whatever you can at the very best that you can, I guarantee you that earnings will come. Speaking of the earnings, it brings me to the next point, which is diversify your income streams. I remember when I was in school, there was this saying that we learned, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And it resonates with me a lot when it comes to business as well. It essentially means do not put all your um, 
income or all your savings in one spot or also perhaps do not just earn your earnings only from one kind of income stream because it has happened to a lot of people you know when there was some devaluation of the currency of something or workplace closed and people were left without any work and without any income stream especially in today's world where everything is so unpredictable with things happening all of a sudden overnight changing it's important to make sure that you have at least two income streams it doesn't mean that you have to be doing different kinds of work you can actually do one kind of work but do it through different channels and on different platforms therefore guaranteeing for yourself that if one platform closed down or something happened to it you could still make your earnings from all the rest of it so to support this point on diversifying income streams, I'll use my personal example. As you know, I'm an etiquette consultant. I've launched this channel, which is monetized, which means it brings me income. I am also offering uh, private as well online and offline workshops and consultations with clients. I am an author of books, so I make earnings from book sales. I've recently also launched my Patreon page where I do etiquette movie club, um, posting uh, interesting videos about etiquette lessons learned from different kind of movies. So I'm also a co-founder of the very first Azerbaijani baby gym. So I have different kinds of works that I'm doing that are generating income on their own and that way I will guarantee that in case if one of my platforms doesn't work or something happens to it I can still guarantee that I have other income streams so to illustrate using another example say you're a graphic designer and you work at a firm and you really love the people you work with you really like the paycheck you're getting and you feel like you're safe and everything is going well but you don't know what can happen the next day so what i would suggest to do is apart from having your own one income stream from the firm that you're working full-time in perhaps take some side jobs maybe you know open your portfolio on different kind of uh, websites like people per work or upwork or any other other online platforms where you can also expose your work and your portfolio so in case something happens with one stream you can always have your client base in another stream so diversifying your income streams is a great idea to guarantee that you will be safe the third thing to take into account is to create your budget. If you're a family, create a budget for the family. If you're a single person, create a budget for your own self. A budget has two important components, which is the spending, so where and to what and how much you spend, and savings, how much you actually put aside. Another important element is taxation, but I will not go into taxation in this video because it's very different from country to country. So make sure to learn about the taxation in your own country so you know what is being taxed and how much is being taxed. So first things first, let's start with spending. Spending is in fact very important. It is very much linked with our mentality. But if you understand that money is just a medium, it flows in and then it flows out. If very little flows out, there's gonna be very little in. If you really visualize this and understand this, you'll know that spending is important. Dr. Joseph Murphy in this book, Powers of Conscious Mind, which I've been referring throughout this video, says that you know if blood is circulating freely in our body, we have a healthy body. If money is circulating freely in our life, we're economically healthy. However, it's important to note here for those that love recklessly spending their money, Spending is not equal to reckless spending. Conscious spending is very different. It means that you know how much to spend and where to spend. In order to do that, you need to differentiate between what is your need and what is your desire. So this is just general business 101. A need is something that we have to spend our money on in order to stay alive. So that's water, that's shelter, that's food, electricity, all these kind of bills. A desire is something that we want, but it's not necessary for our survival. But sometimes that desire, the thing that we desire, can in the long term bring a lot of returned investment. So let's say uh, you wanted this book on financial literacy or another self book that you think is going to give you a lot of knowledge. It's not a necessity. You can live without it. It's not a need. It's definitely a desire. But if you buy that book, that book might give you the exact knowledge that you need in order to start a good business or good relationship or become self-confident, whatever it is that you're looking for. So eventually that spending will bring you a lot of returns in the future. So that is also smart spending. 
other examples of the ones that you might have or perhaps a new camera if you're a videographer or a blogger, uh, maybe an online course if you're looking to enhance your skill set in whatever field that you're looking at, um, perhaps even uh, changing your wardrobe if you need to in order to look more presentable, more professional, investing in all kind of hair salon and other treatments that might help you boost your self-confidence and in the long term um, bring you a lot of new opportunities. So whatever it is, distinguish is it a need, is it a want? And if that is a want, then what you need to do is write down what are the benefits that you're getting out of it and then prioritize. Say you're making whatever X amount of money First, spend on your needs, that's your good food, your house, your bills, all that that's important. And then you can allocate money for the things that you want and then prioritize the ones that will bring you the best benefit and then you can leave the rest money for savings. Before we talk about savings, I want to share this amazing business advice or life advice that I heard from Barbara Corcoran. She's one of the Shark Tanks. By the way, if you haven't watched that show, make sure that you do. It's one of my favorites. It shows interesting business ideas and then Shark Tanks. These are very successful, financially successful people that have a lot of uh, experience in entrepreneurship. They start bombarding them with different kind of questions and that's when you start understanding business and how it works and what are the things that investors are looking for. So make sure that you check it out. But before we start talking about saving, I want to share one of the best advice that I've heard uh, by Barbara Corcoran. She's one of the Shark Tanks on the show Shark Tank. By the way, if you haven't watched the show, make sure that you do. It's one of my favorites. First of all, you'll learn a lot about different kind of crazy and good business ideas, as well as look at what are the investors looking for? What are some questions that they're asking? What are some numbers that are important to know and understand? So it's an amazing show if you're into entrepreneurship. So Barbara was on one of my favorites daytime talk shows with Ellen DeGeneres, she came to talk about her financial success and then she shared an interesting advice for the young audience. She said, when you're spending, make sure to give yourself money for mad spendings or mad money, how she phrased it. And she went on explaining that when she was a little kid, her mom would give her dad $10 a week and say, you can spend this money on whatever hell that you want. And having that money in his pocket to spend on whatever hell that he wanted, he felt like he didn't have to touch any other money. Being able to freely spend money on one thing that you really want, and that will depend how much you allocate yourself, depends on how much you make. It can be different for a different person, but that sense makes you give that freedom to you so that you don't touch the savings that you have actually put away. In other words, let's say you allocate yourself 20 bucks a week for mad money, let's say $20 to get manicure. And when you're doing that manicure, you get so much joy and satisfaction out of it. It makes you feel like a million dollar baby is what she's saying. And when you have that feeling, you no longer feel tempted to touch your savings. It could be as little as $5 a month to get yourself a cup of coffee in a nice cafe that will make you feel like a million dollar baby or it could be you know up to $500 depending on what your budget allows. And regardless the amount, that money should make you feel good. One important lesson to remember when it comes to spending is do not be cheap on yourself. Do not be cheap on your health, on your personal image, on your knowledge, on your skill set. If you need to invest money in all those sectors, make sure that you allocate enough for each. So then in the long term, you will be able to reap a lot of benefits. I know it takes time to then get the benefits, but having this vision that in the long term, all of that will benefit you is a great image to have in mind when you are working with money. And finally, we have come to the last point, which is savings. Make sure that you save money. That is very important. Remember when I mentioned be able to spend, which is very important because money needs to flow, but do not spend recklessly. Make sure to save enough money so you can then reinvest it into something bigger or always have this safety cushion in your life. 
and the book the richest man in babylon which is one of the best books on finance it says the advice is to save 10 percent of your monthly income aside so put it aside like it has never existed you never earned it like forget about it put it aside and forget that it ever existed i would advise to do 15 percent if you can I know on certain um, in a certain season or month there are a lot of birthdays, anniversaries, weddings and things like that. You have a lot of spendings. In that month aim for 10%. But on a low key month or the months that you don't have a lot of occasions or things to spend money on, aim for 15%. If you make this habit of saving money, I guarantee you you will be able to become financially successful. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you're still with me, I'd like to make an announcement that I've launched my Patreon page uh, where I have created a group called Etiquette Movie Club. Every beginning of the month, I announce the movie that we'll be watching together and at the end of the month, I publish a video called Etiquette Lessons from that particular movie. It's very fun, it's very educational and it's only exclusive for my patrons. It's $5 a month, but I think it's worth an investment. Speaking of which, this could be your mad money. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you have learned a lot from this and let me know what are some topics that you would like me to talk more about and do not forget to like this video. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!